we have another guest speaker this afternoon, and I think um, to take a quote from what uh, Mr. Flowers was talking about, and thanks for your good questions there, um, he said, you can't speak for the people you don't speak to. And our next speaker uh, is a dear friend of mine, um, and he kind of really embodies that idea of you can't speak for the people you don't speak to. So Ryan Wren manages Storefront's community engagement programs, uh, design education, and the middle of Broad Street, known as MOB. Store, um, sorry, Storefront Design Studio Collaboration with VCU Arts. He received his bachelor's degree from the University of Richmond and his master's degree in urban and regional planning at Virginia Commonwealth University. Prior to returning to graduate school, Ryan spent four years working as the director of grassroots education for the Virginia Interfaith Center for Public Policy, where he learned the importance of community organizing. In 2013, Ryan was named as one of Greater Richmond's Top 40 Under 40 by Style Weekly Magazine. Ryan resides in Bird Park neighborhood, and he can be found spending his downtime swimming and fishing in the James River. So let's welcome Ryan nicely. John didn't tell you, but he and I actually went to the University of Richmond together, and that's how we know each other. So it's good to be back in the old neighborhood, a couple of blocks from the university right over here. So I heard earlier that you guys learned the word for the day. Today was what? Empathy. Empathy. That's a great word. Does someone want to tell me what empathy means to you? Go ahead. Um, yep. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes. That is the most literal way to talk about it. So what does that mean? put someone else's shoes on. What does it mean to you? Yeah. It means to feel someone else's pain. To feel someone else's pain? Okay, what else? Yeah. Yeah, feel what they feel that's good too. So really to think about putting someone else's shoes on and walking a day in their life to see what they're experiencing, to see what they're feeling. So what I'm here to talk to you a little bit about today is some of the things that I've been involved in in the city of Richmond um, that address empathy and that talk about how we work better together as a city as a whole, how we can use our talents and our abilities to help this city be a better place for everybody. Does that sound kind of interesting to you guys? All right, well that's good to hear. So there's three main points that I want to touch on today. One of them is called holding space. Does anyone have any idea what I say when I mean holding space? All right, well, we'll get to that. The second one is speaking through your actions. What might I mean when I'm asking you to speak through your actions? Yes, sir? Like instead of talking about something, you're doing it? Right, leading by doing. It's a really good way to put it. Yeah, did you have a comment there, too? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, rather than saying what you mean, do what you mean. So you guys have probably talked about this and thought about this and learned about this a fair amount, right? Speak leading by doing, right? That's something that I'm sure is not foreign to you. And the third thing I'm going to talk to you about today is organizing. What does organizing mean to somebody? What does it mean when you're organizing? Yes, sir. That is the definition of organizing. That's correct. What else? Putting something together, okay, that's something. Yes, sir? Step up and be a leader. Okay, so let's put those three things together and we're going to start with organizing. So Mr. Judd told you that I was a community organizer for a little while with the Virginia Interface Center for Public Policy. Now, that's a lot of words, but basically, it's an organization that worked with churches and with synagogues and with mosques and with Hindus and with Buddhists and with LDS communities to talk about things we could all agree on as different communities of faith that would make society better. So those things usually centered around poverty. And I know you guys just learned about poverty this morning from Mr. Flowers when you heard that one in four people in the city of Richmond lives below the poverty line. Is that right? Is that what he told you guys? Did you also know that within just two miles from somewhere close to where we're sitting right now, it's a little more than two miles to the poorest area of the entire city. So less than two miles geographically separates 
the people with the most wealth and the people with the least amount of wealth in our city. So we're really not that physically far from one another on a day-to-day -day basis. Yet we operate in completely different worlds. So when I'm talking about leading through acting, it's about taking actions to bridge some of those divides. So when you're community organizing, like I was with the Virginia Interface Center, you have to listen to a lot of different voices in order to be able to organize and form a coalition or a group of people that can work towards an item. One of the things that we talked a lot about was payday lending. Does anybody know what payday lending is? So payday lending is when someone has a paycheck and they don't have enough money to pay all their bills and they go to a store and this store takes a percentage of their paycheck and then charges them interest so that they can give them a cash advance so that they can pay their bills. But the way these businesses were set up, they were set up as usurious businesses. Does, has anyone heard the word usury before? So they were set up to trap people with no money and to continuing to put every paycheck that they had into this business that would take more and more and more portion of their paycheck each time. So all of these faith communities that I mentioned, the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Hindus, everybody said, this isn't good. We have to do something about this. And that's one of the first things that I ever organized around. So what does that organizing look like? Well, organizing involves a lot of listening. A lot of sitting in a room and listening and using your ears to hear what the points of commonality are. And then developing a plan to take action. Our plan was to put legislation in front of the General Assembly so that they would cap the interest rates that could be charged on these payday loans so that people wouldn't get trapped. So we brought a whole bunch of people down to the General Assembly, and we went and we met and we spoke and talked to our legislators to see if they could rein in this industry a little bit so that people could keep the money that they were making and maybe not get dragged further into poverty. So we've had some success with interest rates interest rate caps when we had a big group of people come together and work towards something. So, who has heard of the neighborhood of Highland Park? All right, good. Does anyone know what side of the city that's on? Yeah. It's on the north side. So I spend a lot of every day up in Highland Park. And I actually started working there by sitting on a park bench. Sounds kind of weird, right? So there's a park up there called Ann Hardy Park. And my hat as an organizer led me through the city of Richmond to sit up there and start talking with people in the community. To go back to the quote that Mr. Judd introduced just a second ago, y'all had to repeat that earlier. Does anyone still remember it? I'm losing, losing it a little bit. Anyone? Yeah, give it a shot. Correct. You can't speak with someone or for somebody. You don't speak for. Yep. All right. Someone. Someone else. You can't speak for someone unless you speak with that someone. There we go. You can't. <laughs> there we go. All right. So this effort to just start out getting to know a community led me to a park bench, and it led me to interact with people who were coming through that park on a daily basis, just hearing what the day-to-day -day needs were in a community that sits in one of those four communities, one and four, under the poverty line. So listening and taking in that information and then utilizing it to make a plan. Organizing into a plan of action. And that action has led us to where we are today, where we've recently opened up a teen center. Who in here is a teenager yet? Not quite, right? We've got a few teenagers, all right. So, we have this teen center now because the community in Highland Park saw that there was a real need for people your age to have a place to be after school. So we organized the community and pulled everyone together to open up a safe place. And this is a community where there's higher levels of violence and where there's higher levels of crime than you might experience in other parts of the city. And that community really needed a safe place for their young people to be after school so that they wouldn't get into trouble or be hurt by being on the sidelines. So it's taking the actions that people tell you would make the most sense to them and utilizing their knowledge to move forward and hold space for them. So this is going to get to my point on holding space. So each of us has power. Every single individual, every single human being has power. And we have different skills that each of us possess. And when we're able to use those skills to help benefit other people around us, it really can go a long way in bridging gaps in our society. 
One of the things that we've started practicing at the Six Points Innovation Center is the idea of holding space. What this means is that if you have a little bit of power to offer, and you go to a certain place that other folks may have never been to before, that you decide to bring them along with you. And you decide to sit and be supportive when they're speaking their truth, and they're speaking their reality to other folks. You're adding your power to their experience so that their voice is louder. It's being empathetic by being there in person, by being there and nodding along and showing your support in person. For example, we have a young woman who got into trouble when she was 19 years old. She did something that ended her up in jail. And once you've been in jail and you have something on your record, you can't ever get that off of your record in Virginia unless you get clemency from the governor, which means that this crime will follow you no matter where you're going. And what ends up happening with these crimes is that people aren't able to be, gain employment anywhere, well, I won't say anywhere, but in a lot of places after they've had this on the record. So what we've decided to do as a collective of organizations is ban the box from employment. So one of the first things that we look at isn't whether or not they've checked this box that they made a mistake in their past. We get to know them first as a person and work with them as a person to allow them an opportunity to come in and have a job and provide for their family. So who, I know you were asked earlier if you volunteered. Let me see a show of hands of people who volunteered. And we've volunteered at what types of places? Go ahead, just yell, yell them out. Churches. Churches. How do you feel after you volunteer? Do you feel good? you feel good after you volunteer? All right. How many of you have gone back to the same place that you volunteered once before? How many have gone back two times? How many have gone back three times? How many have made it a part of their lives to continue that action that helps other people? Good. Tell us, tell us what you what you volunteer for on a regular basis. Um, I volunteer at a local Spanish church. Wonderful. Which one? Um, uh, Sacred Heart Center. Oh, Sacred Heart Center is a great place. So, what type of volunteer work do you do? Um, well, me and my family kind of donate toys and donate clothes that we have, but like no longer fit me and my family. That's great. Another great thing to keep stepping in that path of bridging divides between our city is to continue to be present. And those are the places where you're going to volunteer, that you're going to hear the stories of other people who are your age, and who are just like you in so many ways, but haven't had experiences that you've had. And you can share experiences and set yourself up to be their ally using your empathy going forward. So, let's talk about speaking with your actions. Can someone give me an example of when you used your actions and not your mouth? to do something for someone you didn't know. Yeah, go ahead. I kind of, when somebody's new, like, I kind of help them around, show them what everything is. That's a really great example. So just going out of your way to be kind to somebody else and showing them that they're welcome. That's really important and it's not hard to do. It doesn't cost you <coughs> any money. It's completely free. And it's something that helps you, helps you make a new friend. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sort of like leading by example, like not calling how you do it, or 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 how you I want to let you guys ask me any questions you want about any of these things. Just have a little bit of time and not a lot of pictures to show you. I'm sorry, I forgot my thumb drive. But what kind of questions do you have about what it means to do community work in Richmond? <laughs> the most important thing that I've done at my job. Um, I think that opening up this teen center in Highland Park has probably been the most impactful thing. We have young people your age who come into this place every day after school and have a meal because a lot of them don't have food security and have a safe place to be 
and we've seen a dynamic change in the community, and people's grades are going up. So it's a good thing. Yes, sir. What is your motivation to do the work that you do in Kentucky? I started volunteering at about Bell's age, and um, I was volunteering at a homeless shelter at the time, serving food, soup kitchen, and started to see that there were people who lived not very far from where I lived that didn't have access to any resources. And through volunteerism, I started to learn about the policies and about the day-to-day -day lives of folks that had those different life experiences than I did, and started figuring out ways that I could use my knowledge and the power that I have to make the world better for more people. So it started from volunteerism. Yes, sir. What's, uh, what's one uh, example of one of the conversations you had on that work bench? That so I had a gentleman come up to me. This is one that I'll always remember. I had a gentleman come up to me, probably in his late 50s, early 60s, um, had some physical ailments and wasn't moving very well, and sat down and said, what are you doing here? And I said, that's a great question. I really am not sure. I just wanted to see what's going on here in Highland Park. What, what is going on in Highland and he let me know that in the community, there were a lot of great people. And there were a lot of great people who had been overlooked for a long time. And that he had been organizing in the community himself for about 40 years. This guy's name is Mr. Turner. He lives in a neighborhood about two blocks from this park. And he actually offered to introduce me around. And that was the first click moment where I actually had somebody being empathetic for me in a community that I didn't belong in um, for a lot of different reasons and start to build that bridge between me and a community that I was trying to come into. So that's, that's something that I'll definitely always remember, was showing, being shown empathy uh, sitting on that bench. Yes, sir? Um, so when, around how many people are you helping around each year? So is it like, is it just a one-time thing, or is it continuously um, having the same that's a great question. So we have a lot of different programs through our organization. For like design assistance, we probably have about 120 people a year, and that's usually a one or two time thing. For community engagement, we work with groups as large as 500, 600, and that's usually a series of meetings that last about six months. And in communities like Highland Park, or parts of Church Hill, where we're on the ground present and organizing, we're there year round. So it varies depending on what type of uh, work we're doing in the community. Uh, Blue shirt. Uh, when you were in high school and college, what did you want to do? Uh, like, um, when I was in high school, I thought that I wanted to be a lawyer. When I was in college, I decided I didn't want to be a lawyer anymore, and then I started thinking about the nonprofit sector where I work now. Um, and so it kind of it changed a lot. When I graduated from University of Richmond, I had no idea that I would be doing this right now. But I tried a lot of different things and put myself in different places where I was curious, and ended up landing here. What is your largest project? Largest project. It's probably, so this teen center we're operating is about 10,000 square feet. And right now, we're operating about 4,000 square feet of it. So what we're trying to do is take over the rest of this facility and offer an incubator space for, uh, like one of the one of your graduates from here, Richard Buck, who started Unbound, started small business pieces. So part of what our space is offering is entrepreneurship spaces as we continue to grow out for the young people who come out of the space to start their own businesses. So that's the biggest one. Two more questions, that's guys. One two more, more. Two more questions. All right, right. Um, have you ever gone out of the country to help people in the poverty line? I have. Uh, I've spent time in Nicaragua. And I've spent time. <coughs> excuse me. And I've spent time in Peru. Um, I was in Nicaragua on a trip for the Lutheran Church as part of their delegation that was studying the interconnectedness of poverty, hunger, and climate change. And it was really fascinating. We traveled the entire country of Nicaragua, and I learned a lot from farmers in Nicaragua. And back there. What year did you graduate from college? I graduated from college in 2004. All right, guys, well, I'll be up here. I know y'all are going to sports, but I'm going to turn it back over to you.